Did you know that there are many different types of books? That's right. If you just thought there was memoirs and business fables and how-to books, you're in for a surprise. There are a lot more kinds of books than you ever imagined, and that might just lead you to find a new kind of book that you should write. And you'll learn how to do that on today's episode. Hi, I'm Dan Janelle. I'm a book coach, developmental editor, and ghostwriter. And no matter where you are in the writing process, I can help. Our guest today is Carol Abrahamson. She's been thinking about how experts and thought leaders can monetize their expertise since our first book brought her one-person business over $2 million in consulting revenues, industry leader status, and over 100 of the country's largest corporations as clients. Now, the author of 41 books about her expertise, she guides clients to choose and create the right book for their specific growth goals. This enables them to, to build thriving businesses that can often change everything, broadening their reach and increase their impact. Most recently, she self-published a multi-award winning family of five workbooks to help aspiring executive authors to not only answer the question on every aspiring author's mind, what kind of book shall I write? But more importantly, what's the right kind of book to write that will actually generate my desired business results? Her company, Executive Authors, helps them answer that through her workbooks, an online course, and a consulting program. You can learn more at executiveauthors.com or email carol at executiveauthors.com. Well, welcome, Carol. Let's get started. Great. I'm thrilled to be here, Dan. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's great to have you here. So tell us, how did you get started? I mean, it's, it's funny. You, you, we met in a mastermind group and uh, you never know what's going on or what people have done just by looking at them. By looking at your resume, it's like, Whoa. And you work with Steve Jobs at Apple and 100 corporations. So tell us, how did executive authors come to exist? Well, um, my first book, is, as I mentioned, hit big, was a fabulous success. Lucky me. I didn't know what I was doing, but very lucky me. Uh, and then from there, I created a quickly moved those chapters into separate manuals, a set of manuals. And so with with all of that visibility in my industry, with that, that bunch of books, uh, every time anybody introduced me, they mentioned my book success, even though my topic was never about publishing. In those days, I was doing corporate finance consulting. That's what I did with Apple and many Silicon Valley companies for 20 years. Uh, so my books were just the uh, method. Uh, but I was always introduced with fun fact story about my $2 million in consulting for my little dining room table business. So after the meetings, I was always swarmed by people with had business authors with disappointing results. We'd be in the back of the uh, ballroom after I got off the stage and I started seeing the pattern of all these folks who had spent 30,000 with a ghostwriter or 20,000 with a PR firm got no results from their book. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people throughout the nineties were having these kind of conversations with me. So I started thinking about it and saw a pattern that maybe they didn't weren't writing the right kind of book for their goals and then started developing that content. So the ever present question is what kind of book should I write once somebody decides they want to do a book? And I've been working on building the answer out to that question since the late nineties. And I now have a compilation of over 800 types that I put into 27 categories and publish workbooks about. Wow. Uh, I know three. So <laughs> and I'm guessing a few who are listening may know a few more. So all the do you, you there are more categories than I've ever thought possible. So tell us what exactly is a book type? Well, um, a book type defines the structure of a book. For instance, think about a workbook versus a book of case studies or a book of tips or a narrative. Mm. All of those are different structures. A book type also defines your point of view. Is it a storyteller? Are you challenging some common wisdom? Are you a cheerleader? Are you looking ahead as a visionary? Um, are you warning people of things? Um, so point of view drives um, a you know, key part of the tone of the content. And the third thing a book type does is it determines the voice of the book. Are you laudatory? Are you cautionary? Are you critical? Are you explanatory? So in general, you know, if you look at types like the difference between a workbook or a mistakes to avoid book 
or a compilation of somebody's body of work in speeches or blog posts. Those are all examples of types. And that's what a type brings to a party. That's amazing. You know, uh, I love the use of vocabulary. And I think if, you know, if someone says vegetable, they have a negative connotation. They only think vegetable, but they don't think about, you know, the good vegetables versus, you know, the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> you know? And like, there are so many different kinds of vegetables and so many different kinds of fruits and so many, frankly, different kinds of emotions. Uh, we had the author of the emotion thesaurus, uh, handbook on a previous podcast and it's amazing to think of all the different varieties and depths of of emotion and storytelling you can go once you use different words and are, are exposed to different analogies just like you've done here with you know we shared about nine or ten different uh, ones that said oh yeah that's great point of view is it uh uh aspirational is it motivational is it fact-filled? Is it a, a, a manifesto? I mean, just brilliant. Um, my head is spinning. This is fantastic. You know, is there a technique or a trick that you use to uh, help your authors figure out the process of choosing a type for your well, for their book? I think there is um, that makes it simple. Of course, for eons, people, I think, have probably just scoured book lists to get inspired about what type of book they might write because that's all there was to do. You'd maybe award-winning book lists or even at Amazon searching for a topic and then skimming and scanning the various types of books within that topic that already existed. But I've got developed a system um, that's quite strategic for the business book author in particular um, to first start with defining what you want your book to deliver to your business. Mm -hmm strategic, prioritized, measurable goals about what that book, what you're going to be to look for that, look to that book for doing for your business. And from there, then define the audience that specifically relates to your goals, not necessarily to the rest of your business or the rest of your stakeholders, but the audience that's going to make or break your ability to reach your goals, whether it's to take your business international or move into a different kind of income stream or uh, have a different kind of brand altogether, expand your brand or even or narrow it, niche it down. Whatever the goals are, um, it's the audience that relates to the goals that matters for your book. From there then, once you've got the audience, you look at what are the topics that would solve the pain point the audience is addressing with or provide useful information that they'd really appreciate receiving from you. And then from there, once you've got a few topics in mind, the next step is looking into the types that you have available at places like Amazon, at places like my workbook collections, at award-winning book lists. There's, you know, they're top book titles are listed everywhere and the titles are what reveal the types. So there's any number of ways to start reviewing your types. Once you have a topic or a short list of topics in mind and you start looking at what might be the types that really resonate with you for each of those topic possibilities. And then you move from the short list, of course, to the ones you really, you know, really resonate with that you really want to, um, drill down on or that you might already have all the content developed for in either your head or in your files. And then for a last minute check, um, I recommend that you do uh, that we do look at the books that are already published in the topic of your choice to see what's already out there. And they may be topics you don't necessarily want to stay away from. You might have updates or a contrary opinion or info to add that would make your book on a topic that's already been uh, a topic and type co combination that's already been covered that would make your book a very valuable contribution. So the last step is to look out at the real world to see what's out there and then eventually get to the place where you have your top pick of a topic type combination. Oh, that's a very structured approach. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. When you meet with your clients, do they come in with one idea of what their book should be and then you're exposing them to all the other possibilities? What, what kind of reaction do you get from them? Well, I really need for them to unwind whatever they have in mind for their content or their type because we need to start at what are the goals for the book. And I have 
you know, an industry bias or an industry mantra that drives all my work that different kinds of business goals mandate different kinds of books. So someone may have content in mind, someone may have an audience in mind, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to hear it. We're starting at the beginning with what are the goals and building out the logic from there to be sure that the DNA of their goals are solidly built into the foundation of their book. Exactly. When I work with my clients, we go through a very similar process to ask them, what do you want the book to do for you? And that's a head scratcher for many people because they think, oh, I should have a book. And then I ask a real probing question of what do you want the book to do for your readers? And that's another head scratcher for them because they really haven't thought about that. They just think about, I'm going to write a book. Um, so how do you make all these topics manageable for aspiring authors to consume and make sense of so they can build a short list of favorites? Well, uh, I've published some workbooks that just put them in categories. And we've got about 27 categories. And I have some examples from about 15 categories that I'd love to share with you. When they're in categories, they're much easier to consume and kind of process because they're similar, you know, they're obviously similar in the way that I've categorized them. So I've got, believe it or not, I've got about 55 or 60 types I'd love to share with you in the next, oh, I don't know, three minutes. And believe me, I think you'll grasp and be able to process them because I'm, I'll rattle them off in the categories that they're in and just pop off some examples if if uh, if that's what you'd like to hear, sure. Uh, the more the more co the more content we have, the better. So thank you. Okay, so starting with how to types, how to books, how to book types. Um, how to is the largest category of nonfiction. You may or may not know that. Um, how to books often dominate the uh, bestseller list. So in the how to categories, and I'm going to read these off. Uh, how to achieve, how to avoid how to create something, how to protect something, how to solve something, how to build something. Just a sample of over 100 how-to types that I that are in our in our compilation and I'm sure our compilation doesn't include all of the types that are in the world. Then we look at futuristic types, things like future trends, a looming crisis or changing, excuse me, changes to prepare for, predictions, all our futuristic types. Then we've got types about you. And of course, memoirs fit into this category, but memoirs aren't the only things that fit into the types about you. We've got lessons learned, people I've met, changes you recommend, a rant, a manifesto, what I wish I knew when I was younger, typical examples. Then we've got compilations, which are kind of interesting because they don't require as much original writing. So they're often quicker for a business building author to create compilations like speeches, quotations, not necessarily famous ones, but uh, in either case, um, but famous ones could certainly be uh, uh, mixed in uh, if you have a theme that your speeches or quotations cover. Examples, a book about examples of something. Uh, advice from industry legends is another kind of compilation. Then we've got the category of contrarian types. This would be something unconventional or to present uh, something that dispels an accepted myth. Fun types of books. The fun category is jokes, joke books. Many law firms have become famous by having hugely best-selling lawyer joke books over the last 20 years. If you look at Amazon, uh, puzzle books, satire a fable, a parable, a tall tale, wit and wisdom all fit in the fun category of types. Then you've got guides, insider's guide, easy guide, DIY guide, instructor's guide, fast track guide. And we've got hidden information, books that are about secrets or what someone should know or an inside story or a paradox. History types include a timeline, a tribute, a postmortem, a biography, milestones, lessons. Structured types, that would be books, uh, for instance, something A to Z, a workbook, a planner, a journal, a picture book, a day in the life book. 
then you've got references, kind of the old standby. They would be examples would be a handbook, a fact book, a desk reference, a file dump, a toolkit, a black book. I've got three more categories to share with you. Reviews, reviews of products or the work of others or blogs uh, or apps or a critique. Something new is another category or a new technology, a shift of something, new rules, new thinking, emerging trends. And the last category I have to share with you is something problematic, mistakes to avoid, dangers, what not to do, someone's misadventures. So there's a quick tour of about five dozen types, and you can see how easy they are. I hope you can see how easy they are to track with and consume. Yeah, uh, amazing, and, and it makes such total <laughs> sense. It's uh, And it's easy to follow there, too, and I can see where some of my clients can easily write one of these books or it could cross over into several different categories or just give them different ideas because a lot of my clients or prospects come to me and they say, why should I write this book? Everyone, there are like five other five billion other books about this topic. What would make mine different? And you've just given us 75 ways to make that topic different. So thank you very much. That, that's really cool. Are you ever made, I'll ask one more question, then we'll find out more about you. Are you, ever, do you ever find new categories? Do you like, or, or have you, has everything ever, every category ever been done and you found them and it's all there? Or are you delightfully surprised? It's like, oh, coloring books for adults. I'll add that to my list. <laughs> Something new. Hmm. Well, I've created uh, four workbooks about slices of this compilation. And when I put, those together, the compilation was only about just short of 700 types in size. So my biggest workbook that's available right now uh, selling on my website is 666. I've got 111 how-to books, 222 books that require less writing, less original writing, then the 666 Big Magilla, and then my little my mini workbook, which is available free on my website of 77 types, which is sort of a an overview um, uh, mini course, if you will. So I'm building now, I've just about crested 812, I believe. I add three or four virtually every month that I spot somewhere. And because I don't have them all rolling around in my head every time, I'm always looking up. Well, is this a new one or is this one that I've already got covered? Mm -hmm. And one thing my workbooks have uh, is I've got two examples from Amazon real world for every one of the 666 types and every one of the ones I just read for you. So you can actually see a couple of titles without having to search Amazon yourself. You can just, uh, you know, the the free workbook, 77 types. Uh, uh, each one has the, the two real world examples at Amazon that reveal right away what those types are. And that's the process I follow with the whole collection. Fantastic. You certainly do bring order out of chaos. So Carol, tell us who your ideal client is and how can they get in touch with you? Well, my idea client is business building authors who are really interested in locking in their business results and building in those results into the DNA of their book and the foundation. The way to reach me is executiveauthors.com and the way to and and the way to pick up the 77 book types uh, free ebook at my site is at executiveauthors.com slash book hyphen types hyphen opt in. Great. Thank you very much for sharing your wisdom with us. And thanks, everyone, for listening to our podcast. We have more than 200 podcasts on our YouTube channel, Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle. Check them out so you can write your book in a flash. Thank you.